All right. Uh, we are going to find the moment of, iner moment of inertia uh, of this of uh, this hanging wheel. Okay. So I need a few people. What do you think we might want? Well, what we might want to measure? Radius. Well, we'll need yeah. to do that. Okay. And also the uh, the time for it to fall to the ground. So let's get a couple of uh, phones out here. Now, honestly, I know that there will be people that actually see this video might say, well, they didn't do that right. Well, this, is mo this is mostly a theoretical lab. We are not, we, what is the actual moment of inertia of this wheel? I have no idea. There's probably also friction in the bearings and other things, right? But this is mostly a vehicle for us to, to learn a lot of major topics in this chapter and relate them all. Because when you do them correctly, you get the same answer, which is one of the greatest things about physics. So, we have this little mass, which is a 50 gram mass, and how about right there, is that pretty good? Got it, you can leave. There it goes. We got a few people with their phones ready to go for timing, and we'll just take roughly the average, okay? I see one, who else? Okay, I'm going to do one, two, three, drop. When it hits the ground, you stop it, okay? Get to where you can see the ground, or you want me to just yell out when it hits. Here we go, one, two, three, drop. Stop. You get? I got three seconds exactly. Yeah, three point oh six. Yeah, that's what we got the last time. So three seconds. Let's go ahead and turn to the, turn to the board here. We're turning to the board over here. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to start off, and I'm going to put this in the very center of the board. This is going to be. Uh, well, no. Actually, let's, let's start over here. These will be our givens. These are things we actually know. Some of better get back there and, and measure the. You already measured the radius earlier, right? What'd you get roughly? 0.27. Can we just round that to 0.3? Just for ease of, we're just doing this for ease of calculation, okay? So here's our givens. And a given, by the way, is a type of primate. I'm oh, sorry, that's a given. I'm sorry, these are our givens, okay? So we have that our time equals 3 seconds. We said our radius equals 0.3 meters or 30 centimeters. What else do we know? The mass. The mass is 50, 50 grams, which we use what? What do we use instead? 0 0.05 kilograms. Um, oh, we know one, one other thing. How high it was. How high it was, which was? Two meters. We can call that delta Y, or sometimes we might call that H. Now, here's where it gets a little bit weird, ready? Um, is that positive two meters or negative two meters? Here's where it gets goofy. If you're, when you use F equals MA, you have to keep track of positives and negatives. When you use weight, MG, do we generally call that a positive or a negative? Positive. positive. I'm saying MG, do we call that a positive oh, or a negative? negative. Positive. A lot of times, don't we call that a negative? We call it a positive if it were to the center of a circle. Mm -hmm. But since that's not going to the center, wouldn't you agree, most of the time we make that negative? Yeah. So therefore, we are calling that the negative direction. So this delta Y is actually... Negative. negative two meters. Let's do that for consistency. Now, H, yes, when you do potential energy, you'll just call it two meters. Do we agree with that? Yes. Okay, I'll erase that because I know there'll be some trolls out there going, oh, rah, rah, rah. yeah, yeah. Righteous. Okay, <clears throat> so we're good with this. And there's one more thing that we know. Yes. <laughs> we know the. <laughs> it started at. Rest. Rest. Therefore, its initial velocity equals zero. Equals zero meters per second. Well, don't we also know the acceleration? No. Okay. Did it fall at negative 9.8 meters per second squared? No. No, it did not, did it? Because what was slowing it down? The wheel. The wheel, or more likely, or more, more precisely, the tension in the rope. Yeah. I think that was on the homework, wasn't it, where it talked about that. Okay. <coughs> so, now that we have this... Would we agree that we can calculate stuff? Now, if we want, we could do this faster than what we're going to, but I want to show you where a few calculations populate other possibilities, and those possibilities are not difficult. When you are doing a complex calculation, sometimes you are literally just calculating, well, where am I going? Where is this going? I don't know where it's going. I'm just finding stuff. Then later on, you say, I need this, and you kind of calculate, oh, hey, these are very close now. You know, when you first do something, it's not a straight shot. You do a lot of figuring, and then you can figure out where you're going next. Okay? So, let's figure out our first things. So, would you agree that if we know our 
Initial velocity. We know our time, and we know our change of position. And I'm going to star those. You're a star. Okay? If we have those things, can we not calculate all the other kinematic quantities? Oh, yeah. Okay, do it. Pause. All right, so this is what you should have done. I'm going to show the calculations here, and because I'm going to need this space for other stuff. So, to, since we have these three things, let's say that I want the final velocity. Do we see? Can you go push those up? Can you see it or not? Yeah. So, on our, our uh, kinematic equations over there, I guess let me grab them real fast. Can I actually help you out? So here, it's one of the great things about this. So, if we take this here, you notice that this one does not have acceleration, does it? Yeah. But it has delta x, which you can replace with delta y, and you have t and you have vi. So if I want to calculate vf, I would use this one because I do not have acceleration. Here, let's say I want to get the acceleration. So we're going to find vf and acceleration. You might say, I'll find that one first. You don't have to. If I wanted to count, find the acceleration, would you agree I do not have the final velocity? This one does not have final velocity. Use that one. Okay, and if you're struggling on this, on my website, if you go to the links, kinematics, there's a web quiz on this which will help you teach you how to actually do this, okay? So, let's find this one first. So, we have delta y, one half, vi, which is zero, plus v, and I should, well, we'll leave it this way, then I'll put the numbers in. For those of you wondering why I'm going so quickly right now, because I have kids leaving class early, and zoom, 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 here I go. So... Uh, I could solve for, for VF. I know some physics teachers will go nuts because I'm not going to do it that way first. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. When I'm just calculating an answer, a lot of times I don't. If I want to see relationships, I keep them in variables. Okay? So that is uh, negative 2, 1 half, 0, VF, and 3. Multiply by the 2, that gives me negative 4 equals VF times 3. Divide by 3. Negative 4 thirds equals VF, which is negative 1.33 meters per second. And I'm going to put this up here now that I have that information. I'm kind of, I'm making my list. So I'm not going to check it twice, because I know who's not here nice. Uh. Most of you are not. Okay, yeah. moving on. I can delete that out. Okay. <laughs> All right, can I erase this or not? Because it's going to be on the video. Can I erase this, or would you rather keep it here for a little bit? You can erase it. Erase it. Okay. You guys can go backwards. Yeah. I might not delete that. That wasn't. Just yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to use this one here. We have delta y equals. All you physics kids are just warped. But at least you're not bad drama kids. Oh no. Yeah. I was a drama kid. I get it. Okay. So that's breaking. What they call that? Breaking the fifth wall or whatever it is. You know, where you talk to the fourth wall. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, so this is negative 2, 0 again, 1 half a, and 3 squared is? 9. Multiply, you get negative 4 over 9, which gives me? That gives you the negative point four 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 meters per second per second. And, what, and however many 4s... If you love fours, you just keep going. Wait, if you're in chemistry, you say, no, 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 too many sick things. Wouldn't it be easy to use a second equation? I could have. But, okay, let me, let me discuss that quickly, okay? Now, for what we're doing here, if I wanted to, once I've calculated this, I could use that, couldn't I? Yes. Mm -hmm. It is always best to go back to your... Now, here, we've done all sorts of, like, this is close to this, this is close to this. But in an actual... If you were doing this in the lab and you were really doing this for real, you, you would not use this because you're using a calculated quantity to find an, another quantity. Okay. You are in entering error. Always go back to your first quantities, your givens, as okay. often as possible. Right? So, not to mention, I also want to teach well, you that you don't have to find final velocity first. Okay, are we all good here? Yes? Okay. Can I erase? Yes. Again, it's going to be online, yes? Let me just pause. I'll leave that one for just a Mr. Mason. You good? Okay. Mr. Mason to you. Yeah. Okay. Right here. All right. Now, the next thing, would you agree that now that we have all the linear quantities, uh, it might be good? Wait a second. Okay. Did you solve for A? I did. 
Okay. Yeah. Wait, I'm okay, some people didn't see how I did that. So now I have negative two, sorry, one half a times nine. We all agree with that. I think you just used a different equation. Multiply by two. We agree, right? Yeah. <coughs> yes? Okay, no, I just like plugged in the wrong number. It happens. Anyway. Yeah. Okay, so. we all make mistakes. You can ask Mr. Chua, I make them all at the time. He's now my editor. Okay, we good? Can we move on? Now, we would like to get from these our linear quantities, and in some cases, because we have a rotating wheel, we're going to kind of want to know the, ro the, the, linear qu the, the rotational quantities, won't we? Would you agree? I don't have, so looking over here again. Zoom. So, would you not agree that as this falls, however far this falls, the, the max, that's how far the outside of the wheel turns? Do we agree with that? So, this distance of two meters, it turns out that the edge of this moved two meters. Therefore, also, would you agree that this, this speed is the same as this speed? Or I could just do this. Do well. <laughs> you agree that it does this? Yes. You see how the top of the wheel, like my hand, yeah, got the, got the wheels there, it's okay. It's like a, it's like a three year old. Okay? Going like this, yes? You see how those <laughs> speeds are going to be the same? Yes. We call those tangential quantities. That the tangential quantities at the outside of this wheel will equal the, the, the linear quantities of this mass. Are we in agreement with that? All right, back up front. So, we should know now that the linear, oh, I'll do it this way. So the linear quantities equal the tangential quantities of the outside of the wheel. Can we agree with that, yes or no? Yes, no? That's what we were talking about here. That everything, all the speeds, velocities, and distances of the mass equal the speed, distances, and velocities of an object on the outside of that wheel. Yes? Okay. So. We did this. So we did this earlier. We especially did this one where Vt equaled r omega. Do we kind of remember that? Mm -hmm. Our tangential speed is r times our angular speed. <clears throat> now, what we did back there is we said that our distance around the outside of a circle, which algebraically we call arc length, and we use the letter s, okay, you could call it, that's the distance on the outside of the wheel. That equals r theta. <coughs> yeah. Well, don't worry about this so much right now. I really, we need to get this, otherwise the next step is going to be hard. Okay? So if this is true, in other words, as the wheel turns one time, doesn't one circumference of, of string go down? Yes. If that's true, if that's true, then you, div then you divide by t and you end up here. Divide by t again and you get your tangential acceleration equals r alpha. Do we see that there? This is in radians per second squared okay. times meters gives me meters per second squared. All we're doing is taking each one and dividing, or later on we'll say we're taking the derivative. We take one, we divide by t, divide by t, etc. Ah, it's almost as if there were a master equation here. And that master equation were tangential equals r times the angular. Oh. And don't these equal our tangential quantities? Mm -hmm. So now we can just say linear quantities for the mass 
And this is also our tangential quantities for the wheel. You see them? Mm -hmm. These are the same. And everywhere it says V, you'll just put VT, VTF, AT, etc. Yep, that'll be angular velocity, angular acceleration, etc. Okay, just angular. Energy. Yep. Oh, gotcha. So tangential quantities don't equal angular. No. Tangential, tangential means tangent to the circle. Okay, got it. Again, if you remember my fist and my elbow, right? Fist, elbow, I get it. So if I'm doing this, doesn't my fist go a greater distance than my elbow? I guess I'll do it this way, it'd be easier to see. And I'm wearing short sleeves today. I know, it's amazing. You can see, see the. Yeah, so I usually wear long sleeves, so that's kind of weird. So. Fist, elbow. You can agree that the fist goes a greater distance than the elbow linearly. I mean, in meters, right? Yeah. This is a greater distance in meters than this. It's but it's the same angles. It's 90 degrees. Yeah. So therefore, they have the same angular quantities, but they have different tangential quantities, tangent to the circle. Yeah. <clears throat> Are we good? Yeah. So now that we know this, and can I erase all of this? And we have our transformation equation. So now we're going to go, ah, oh, transformation equation. This will be tangential equals r times angular. That's the worst r ever. So now, now that we have the tangential quantities, we should probably calculate the angular, angular quantities. Sunday, Sunday. Go. Calculate all your tangential quantities, or your angular quantities. Alright, so we should have calculated, you guys are going to have to give these to me. T obviously just becomes T. There is no such thing as angular, angular time. Yeah, there's angular time. Yeah. It's curved time and space. And then this will become what letter? Theta. Now, this is where it gets a little weird. You might say, why is that not a negative? <clears throat> Nothing that we're actually doing in this lab is directional. So in this case, all we care about is the speed, which is a positive number. Okay? What would you guys get for that? Isn't, how, do you, how do you even solve for that? Though? Well, look, you've got your tangential quantity divided by r gives you your angular quantity. Yeah, but the it's speed equals r theta, right? Wait, so you're saying that like... No. <laughs> so you would just take... Your tangential you quantities like, will equal like, r so times your angular. So the yeah. angular quantities are linear quantities are like four interchangeable? Not interchangeable, but you can calculate between one and the other. They're not interchangeable. Interchangeable means they're equal. Yeah, Did you say s equals r theta? Yes. That's speed, right? That's no. s. No, that is arc length. Arc length. Oh, arc length. Oh, arc I was like, I can't solve it this. Arc length. It's okay. So, is everybody following now what we're doing here? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so theta will equal the distance it travels around the wheel divided by r, which is? Negative 6.6. We're just going to do 6.6. Just because, again, we're going to use positive quantities, you'll find out that there's nothing that you need to do other than that. So, we should have, and I've got this all worked out, I've got an Excel spreadsheet that just gives me these numbers. Uh, you divide negative 2 by the radius, which is put here. Why? Because when you plug it in, so you have the tangential, so. which is negative 2. Divided. So you said negative 2. Oh, I think you did. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes? Chloe, well, you're with me now? Yeah. And I know that, R, and I don't know what else to call the R. You know, we could just call it, that's actually one of those, one of those things that when we do this, I hate it the most. Because S stands for arc length, but I, I man. Okay. Are we following how we got that one? Yes or no? Yes. Looking around the room. Yes? We're good. We're good. Okay, so then, what's my initial angular speed? Zero. 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 <coughs> and I could put radians per second. Isn't zero times anything zero? Yes. And then my final, 
will be this divided by my radius, which gives me 4.43 radians per second. And again, you're going to find out that you don't need the positive and negative in this case. So we said that it's negative 1.33 divided by 0.3 is in this 4.43 radians per what was the last thing? Yeah. Are we good? And now we take this, divide by r, and we get that alpha equals 1.48 1 radians per second per second, or radians per second squared. Let me just check. Yep. We're all good. Pause. Okay, you can go ahead and pause. So, next, we try to come up with different things that are occurring back there with the wheel. So if someone give me one thing that we, we obviously see happening back there. We've used all sorts of different, uh, different relationships, different concepts. Give me one concept that you can see that's happening back there. Yell something out. Conservation of energy. Conservation of energy. Let's try that. This is actually the easy one. What is our fate? There was a little bit of an awkward pause there, wasn't it? All the teachers are going, he's videotaping his kids fail. No. Yeah, they're all trying to think through. There's a lot. There's five different concepts we're going to try to use on this. Um, so conservation of energy. Conservation is always? It's the same. Yeah. Before equals after. And for us, instead of before equals after, we're going to use initial equals final. So that says that our energy, all of our energy before, equals all of our energy afterwards. What kind of energy was there before? Potential, potential or say potential gravitational, right, of the mass. mass. Did the wheel have potential energy? Mm, yes. Yes. Can it fall? No. Yes. No. And by the way, there's no such thing as rotational potential energy. And if you'd released the whole thing at all, it wouldn't rotate it. Okay, so we agree that we only have, and we use U, some people use PE, but we're going to use U of the mass equals, and afterwards, what do we have? Rotational. We have both kinetic of the mass falling and kinetic of the wheel turning. Are we all good with that, yes? Question? No. We're good? All good? So, and what is that equal to? MGH. MGH. <coughs> and what's our H actually equal to? Two. Not, not negative two. 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 Because that has to be a positive value, right? Two. Equals, yes, two. Oh, that was two. I'm sorry. <laughs> and this is one half? No, rotational. Oh, I omega, omega squared. And since we're talking about afterwards, this would be initial or final? Final. 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 Now, I guess I should have made that final up here, but we, we understand what we're doing. Okay, plus one half mv final. Final. final squared. This is for the mass. This is for the wheel. <clears throat> yes, no. Yes. And what are we trying to solve for? You may remember we're trying to find the moment of inertia of the wheel. Ah, there it is. Let's, let's do a quick sweep here. Have it or not? Have it. Have it. Have it. Have it. Have it. Have it. How simple is this? Go. Pause. All right, so I'm just going to throw a bunch of numbers in here. I, I could start to collect things. You see how there, when we do this down a ramp, you remember that the M's cancel, don't they? Well, the M's are not canceling because I'm solving for I. It's in there. I don't know what it is, but it's in there somewhere. So MGH gives me uh, 0 0.05 times 10 times 2. That gives me 10. That gives me 1, right? Mm -hmm. And that's 1 half and then omega squared times I plus 1 half my mass again. And my final velocity is 1.33. I got 42.45. Okay, and then do a bunch of crap. Sorry, a bunch of stuff. Yep. 
Yeah. Did you get like to zero? Okay, good. I got this to be 0. 0.044. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I actually got 0. 0.01. <laughs> well, that's the same thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, you got 0.009 now. This is 9.8, right? Oh, yes. Uh, one. Yeah. So it's going to be 1 minus 7.044 divided by 9.8. Uh, and I get 0 0.098, roughly. 0 0.097. Oh, the element of the for those of you purists that like to do everything in variables, because obviously kids are making all sorts of mistakes here, and honestly, I found out if you can do it with numbers or variables, you should be able to do either one. So, let's go ahead, and you see how there's a 2 on both sides? I'm going to multiply the whole thing by 2. 2, sorry, 2 MGH equals I omega final squared plus M V final squared. I'm going to take this and bring it to this side. So I equals, and yeah, let's take the M out. We might as well. It's kind of cool algebraically. It doesn't mean anything. I don't know. <clears throat> and that gives me 2GH uh, minus VF squared over omega final squared. Now, I just want to point something out, and this is kind of semi-interesting here. What is G? G is that an acceleration, right? And that's meters per second squared, yes? Times meters gives me meters squared per second squared. And that's meters squared per second squared. And you cannot add things unless they are the same units. So we know we did the math right. So let's go ahead now and put all the numbers in. We're just using 10 for G just to make this better. 2, because that's how high it was up. Now, the question was asked, why don't we use a negative here? Two, two comments here. Because you're going to square it anyway. I'm going to square it anyway. See? And then this is going to be 4.43 squared. And I'll bet if you put all those numbers in, you get 0.097. I just got it. I must have did it wrong or something. You must have. It's amazing how that happens. So is that because you can't have negative energy? Well, kinetic energy, whether you speed up that way or speed up that way, you're gaining energy. Okay. Can you tell me how? So. Now we're trying to think of other things that we see back there. What other equations have moment of inertia in it? Moment of inertia, I, is the analog, it's the, it's the rotational analog of what? Mass. Mass, right? What other equations have mass in it? Angular momentum. Angular momentum. Angular momentum is I omega, isn't it? And what, so let's go ahead and go to that one. Uh, I'm going to erase this because I'm going to need this next space here. And we actually ended up with I equals 0 0.097 kilogram meters squared. Okay? So, now, let's do momentum. Now, did you see any kind of collision occur? Yeah. No, so we cannot use conservation of angular momentum or con any kind of conservation of momentum. But what causes momentum? What causes energy? What, what is a force that causes energy is called? Yeah, these are my advanced kids. Yeah. What is it when you sorry when you get when you create energy, something has to do work. Work. They do know these words, yes. So work causes energy. What causes momentum? Impulse. Impulse. Well, you have to speak loudly. <laughs> yep. I always get these kids who say, <laughs> What? I said, you know, come on, I gotta hear this. Okay. So, impulse, and I don't know what to call angular impulse. I've never seen a variable for that. So, I'm just gonna put angular impulse equals change of angular momentum. Well, impulse is what times what? 
Force, force times, times time. time. And what is the angular force? The angular force is causes a rotation. Torque. 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 So this will be torque times time equals L final minus L initial. What is L initial for the wheel? Zero. Zero. So that already disappears. What is torque equal? Again, all I'm doing is following the right rabbit here. What is torque equal? Force times force times the moment arm, right? Yeah. And in this case, what's the moment arm? It's the radius of the wheel. So this is actually uh, torque. Remember, torque is R cross F, which in our case will be the, the what is the force acting on this wheel? The weight. The No. What's attached to the wheel? Mass. The tension. the tension times the radius <laughs> times time equals, what does that break into? Um, I, I, I omega, omega final. So let's look at this. What do we know? Do we know the radius? Yes. yes. Do we know the time? Yes. Yes. Do we know omega? Yes. 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 What do we not know here? I. We do not, no, I, no, which I. is what we're looking for, but we need no, to know the tension. tension. Yeah. Now before, we made a comment, does the tension equal the weight? And I'm going to do this in another color, hopefully this actually is dark enough. <coughs> so right here, we're going to need a little bit of, I guess we'll use this right here, this will become pretty useful for everything else. If you have forces, you should always write a force diagram. And force diagrams generally lead to what equation? F equals MA. F equals MA. So what's that? Tension, tension and that's weight. weight. Or the force due to gravity. Which one is greater? This one. Why? It was accelerating downwards. We just solved that. A lot of kids will say, well, mg equals t, only if I'm holding it still. Okay? So, the famous f equals ma. Okay? What is, what are all my f's? Tension. Tension. Minus mg. Equals m times a. Oh, it's not in a circle, so we can't use our omega squared. It's, it's almost would be like real helpful if like we knew the acceleration. <laughs> Go find me the tension. Go. Wait, but why is it not in a circle? Sorry. So I solved this for you. So hopefully you figured out how to. Do, once you get to this point. It's just a matter of putting numbers in. Now, real quickly, why did I make this a negative? Well, didn't we call this down? And didn't we say that this was down as well, and we called that negative? This is where you, have, you can lose track of what you're doing. Now, the question also arose, why is it that I'm not using r omega squared or v squared over r? Because the, we're talking about the mass, and the mass is moving linear. The wheel is rotating, but the torque is not causing the wheel to rotate that way. Yes. This is the tangential quantity, not the angular quantity. Well, actually, this is a linear quantity because these are the. This is the mass going down. It's linear. Oh, so the a. I don't even. I, I used to. Okay. Yeah, but it turns out, remember that this equals the tangential. It's the same number. Yeah, but I used the you know, angular. No, no. This is a, not not alpha. Now I did this in black because this and I because I wanted a different color. I want us to be able to find that. You can see that, yes. Okay. So. That right there, we're going to use a lot now. This is going to become fundamental. So over here, I bet you can solve for I now, can't you? Yeah. Go do it. Pause. So you should have gotten that we have T, 0.478. We just calculated that. R was 0.3. Our time was 30 seconds. Divided by 4.43. Okay, this is one of the hardest things here is you can lose negatives. So the question is, well, is this tension positive or negative? For the mass, the tension is positive. For the wheel, you could say the tension is negative. However, why did I not use a negative here? If you take this as the wheel turning like this, okay, here's the, the, the tension's pulling this direction. 
Would you agree it's all moving the same direction for the wheel? Mm -hmm. Your tension's pulling this way, the wheel's moving this way. So let's just call that the positive direction for the wheel because the wheel is gaining speed. Okay, and yeah, this is the, one of the harder things. When do you use negatives, when you don't? Oh. And you just have to do it enough times to kind of get a feeling for it. Is it because you're using, you're essentially finding the acceleration of like the mass right there? Yeah, this is or for like, the mass. Or not yeah. the acceleration, but like you're using the linear acceleration. Yes, 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 yes. Mass. This is so the mass. Why you, okay, because yes. the mass is technically um, moving in. Or this not is moving, for the mass, yeah. right? Okay, I understand. That. I know, it's a lot of stuff. No, yeah. Okay, okay so are we good here? And you should have gotten the same number, yes? Yes or no? <coughs> Did we get it? Yeah. Okay, pause. Move on. Oh, someone said it. Go. Work. Work. Power. Well, does not work equal a? Power. Change in energy. Change in energy. So we have work to energy. Well, what is work? What is our equation for work? Force times distance. Force times distance, or angularly would be? Force times distance. Torque times Alpha or theta, how far it turns, right? Yeah. Equals the wheels. Now this is where you get a little goofy. When we did conservation of energy, our whole system was the mass in the wheel. But if we want to talk about the work done on the wheel, then it's just the wheel. Okay? So this will be one half I omega final squared. And since we already have the tension. And we already have omega, and we have theta. How fast is this? This is going to be r times f times theta, one half i omega final squared. Again, once you get the concept, this is the rest just putting in numbers. So I'm going to solve for this. So I get two r f theta divided by omega final squared, which is 2 times 0.3. Uh, and this force is actually the tension. And the tension we found to be 0.478. Our theta we found to be 6.7 radians, divided by uh, omega final, which is 4.43 squared. That all equals I. And I'm betting if you put that together, you get 0.097. Now, yes, I did that very quickly because we have two other concepts to get to, and I want to make sure we have time to get to those. Once you understand this concept, I'm kind of assuming you can go through and do the rest. Yes? So pause. Okay, so once again, we got the same number. And here, here was the next question, because if, if, if some people have questions, other people have questions. Why do we move that with tension? We're talking about what's doing work on the wheel. And what's doing work on the wheel is the tension, the rope. And isn't it pulling at the radius? Yes. And that's how far the wheel rotates angularly. And that's how, how much angular moment, actually angular speed is gained by the wheel that converts into kinetic energy. Okay, and we got the same one. The next concept, anybody got one? Power. No. But, <laughs> but thanks for throwing that out. Um, we've got, oh, well. We did forces, didn't we? Yeah. What is F equals MA angularly? Ah, uh, so now let's use the, I'm just going to call this uh, forces. And when we say forces, we're thinking torques, right? So if F equals MA, then torque equals I alpha. Okay, close door. There we go. Okay, boom. Okay. And do we know our torque? What is our torque equal to again? R, R cross F. And we know alpha already, don't we? Yes. And R equals just R. F is tension equals I alpha. I equals R T over alpha equals 0 0.3, 0 0.478 over 4.4, no, 1. alpha, 1.48. Someone calculate that for me. 0.097. Yeah, you. It's insane. So good, dun, dun, so good, dun. Yeah, all right. Bump, 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 yeah. Got to do that one right, do that. Okay. 
Well, we got, let me see. There was one more that we came up. These are the, so once, let's look at these again. Can you, can, you, can you go with me here, girl? So we go over here. We start off. We're, 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 we're panning. Yeah. So once we get, we started with our givens. Everybody, let's do this. We started with our, yeah. yeah. So production, yeah. Just with the camera. Yeah. The boom mic. Yeah. The, the boom mic. Yeah. That would have happened in my room. Yeah. So over here, we started with our givens. We did some basic calculations. Knowing that one concept, we got all of these. From that, we could calculate all sorts of stuff, which is the best part of physics. Anyway, and then we said energy. That was we fossil. That was easy. Then we ran into uh, impulse and momentum. We said, oh, we need the torque. And to get the torque, we have to have the tension in the rope. And notice, no. And once we have the tension in the rope, it's pretty easy to go to other things as well easily, right? Okay. This one, actually, most people don't come up with work, but notice that wasn't that difficult, was it? Once we have the tension and the torque, that's pretty easy. And then we came over to forces, which is actually, again, notice that was very, very easy as well. Now I'm going to present one more. We're going to give you a second to think if there's one more that we could have used. I came up with it yesterday. We're going to use momentum one more time, but not just for the wheel, but for the, the whole oh, system. Move <laughs> so on over here. So if we do, and Kimberly's not going to be too happy because I'm going to remove her. Ah, oh, there's probably enough room. We can leave the good saying up there. You're right. Okay, so we're going to do uh, impulse momentum. The whole system. What? So, now you might say, how can we use momentum for the whole thing? We did something earlier where we talked about an object moving linearly can have angular momentum. Remember R cross P? Yes. All right, so we're going to say that the impulse, that's our angular impulse, isn't it? Yes. Equals change of momentum, which is L final minus L initial. And what's L initial again? Zero. Zero, because the whole thing is not moving. Do we know our torque? Yes. Now we've got to be real careful. What is our torque on the system? What about that tension? Is that tension internal to the system or external to the system? Internal. Internal. That means, that means, let me draw this. If this is the mass, we have mg, we have T, and then we have the wheel. For the wheel, there's a T pulling down as well. And what do you notice about those two T's? They cancel. So the only force external to the system is mg. Question? I was going to say, I thought the tension was the same throughout. The rope. The rope. But it is. Okay. That's so why these two are equal. Okay, but it's just they're like on cancelling the, each other out. On the way, yep. Okay. It's, it's so what is moment. that gonna be? That's gonna be moment arm times the force. And what force do we have? Mg. So that's gonna be R. Let's go down here. We're gonna have oh that looks like it's going around the wheel. We don't want that. That would be confusing. So we have R cross F times t <coughs> equals, oh, but what's our final angular momentum? How many things are moving afterwards? Zero. Isn't the wheel moving and the mass is oh, moving? Oh, yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> so here we go. Yeah, I might, might, might just, uh, no, sorry. So we have L final for the mass and L final for the wheel. No. <laughs> and what's R? How, remember, that's your line, right? Mm -hmm. But does it still connect to the wheel? Yes. Exactly yeah, at the radius? radius. So the moment arm is still R. And F is now? Mg. Mg times T. Do we know all that stuff? Yes. Yes. How about L for the mass? What's our equation for the angular momentum of a linear object? What is the angular momentum of a linear object? Yeah, R, P. R cross P. Yes. Like, like torque, which is R cross F, 
and linear momentum is r cross b. The line of action, right, <coughs> closest and in the distance directly to the pivot, and isn't that r? So this is going to be r cross p, and this is going to be, for the wheel, what's the final angular momentum of the wheel? I omega final. So now let's look. Do we have R? Yes. Do we have M? G? Yes. T? Yes. R? Yes. Do we have the final momentum of the, of the hanging object? Is that just MV? What is P? Momentum, which is just M yes. times V. But I know that P is momentum. Yeah. So what was, the, what was the question? What was the question? <laughs> Didn't you just ask what is P? Uh, no, but we can put in MB. Okay. Okay. So let's 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 just let's just move on with can we just move on with variables here? Let's just see let's just see if anything interesting happens. Okay. So we get R M G T equals R M B final. That's for the mass plus I and well. It, just because, well, we're going to get there later on. I'm going to change this here in a bit. Bring this over. Yes? Mm, no. Yeah, because it's not there, too. So I'm going to gather these up, and I get RMGT minus RMV. And won't that all be over omega final? Do we all agree with what I have there, yes or no? If I wanted to, could I pull R omega out? You see how there's R omega, R omega, I could pull those out. Yeah. RM? Sorry, R, RM, yeah. You agree that I could pull R, RM out, yes? Yes. Would that be useful? I don't know. At this point, it's just a, at this point, when, you, when, you're, when you're doing things, if you're just trying to crunch the numbers, you just crunch them. But if you're trying to see, is there like any special relationship going on here, right? Does Joey really love Michelle? I don't know. Okay, but it, just, whatever. Sorry. So, um, yeah, everybody else here is used to it. Um, yeah, something in the air. Get rid of it. Um, so if I wanted to, when you're actually using variables, you're trying to see if there's something. Is some, well, isn't there an R in there? There's an R in there, isn't there? Yes. Will that matter? I don't know. Let's find out. We're looking for things. Okay. Waldo, finally. Okay. So if I have R M G T minus V over, and that will be? V over R. V, these are both V final, sorry. Over R. I don't see anything that's going to cancel. What is that R going to do? It's going to flip to the top, and you're going to get R squared, aren't you? So nothing really seems to cancel. So after all that work, gee whiz, you're not going to get anything special. So you could have gone up here and just crunched. You could have just thrown the numbers in, crunched them, and like our friend in the back there, he just couldn't put, multiply by two. <laughs> no. So, the lid. Yeah, he's not here. He doesn't know where it is. He's going to wonder. He's going to wonder. Yeah, I could have left that omega. Do we want to just leave it as omega? Just for the final calculation? All right, so we're going to get R, M, which is 0.05. I would have lost my brain, no one's surprised by that. 3 minus, is it 1.33? Yes. Yeah. A limbo there. Divided by, what's it make? 4.43. Is it squared? No, it's not squared. Someone crunch those numbers real quick to see what we get. Surprisingly, it's 0 0.097. 0 0.097, yeah! <laughs> no, not again. It's following us. All right, so here we go. And here's the amazing part. Here, again, this is actually why I loved physics, because it, no matter which way you try to go, it's, it's like a maze or a labyrinth that you go here and you start following this path and you get to the end. Then, oh, well, I start here and I go over here. I get to the same spot. In physics, if you do the physics correctly, it always gets to the same answer. That's very satisfying for me. It's almost like, you know, barbecue on a Friday night, you know. Um, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, 
But, that, but does that feel good? Look, how many different ways did we do it? We did one, two, three, four, five ways, and we got the exact same thing. Which of these should you be able to do? All of them. All of them. That's the hardest one. But notice, each one is about a different concept, applying it correctly, and then just following a white rabbit. Bye.